Hello everyone, welcome to re-entry testing in the TRAPPIST-1 system in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. This version of the TRAPPIST-1 system is one I created using a simple configuration file and the Copernicus mod. And I started a career mode with it, with the, just the stock parts, and I killed Val uh, on re-entry because re-entry speeds are very fast and our heat shield melted away and the pod overheated and everything. So here I'm testing out what might be a safe level for re-entry for our Kerbals in this enlarged Kerbin. And so I went into the settings, I changed the re-entry heat to 50% and I cheated this pod into orbit and we are deorbiting it with Jeb here. And you can see the surface velocity here, of course, more than double that of regular stock Kerbin. But we are just planning to use the stock parts. I'm trying to change as little about the game as possible, but have the Kerbals find a home in our universe. And with 50% re-entry heating, it looks like the pod survives quite well. Uh, less than half the ablator was gone and the pod didn't explode. I decided to try out a re-entry from the moon, uh, which in this system, I replaced the moon. The moon is the same size as normal. You can see the orbital speed is the same and the 50% for re-entry heating is still there. Uh, but because of its placement around Kerbin and because Kerbin is so much bigger, uh, the return delta V is much greater. And in fact, greater than that for Earth's moon because this moon is closer to Kerbin than Earth's moon is to Earth and the relative sizes are such that we need about 900 meters per second to get back. So that's something new I learned about this situation. Uh, there's a lot I could say about that as far as why that is. And uh, frankly, there probably isn't a real moon around this TRAPPIST world, TRAPPIST-1E. Um, this is a contrivance so that we have a few more things to explore. Uh, in order to have a moon here, you basically would have to have the enormous densities that you have with Kerbin's, Kerbin's moon. And I haven't changed that density. And so Kerbin's moon can exist there, but a real life moon probably couldn't is basically what I'm saying. So we have Kerbin's moon there for now. Uh, so that's a slightly unrealistic thing going on. But anyway, our focus is on re-entry for now. And uh, here it doesn't seem like it's doing too badly. You can see the speed coming in. So even though it takes a lot to capture around that moon and come back, uh, the transfer to the moon probably isn't too bad because it's not as far out. So yeah, that's probably a plus side to the whole business. We'll see what the full Delta V for like a round trip would be. But here we actually lose maybe less than we did from low Kerbin orbit. I there, there might be a good theory for that. Like, you know, we're not, we're coming in shallower. It's not quite as steep or something like that. But anyway, the point is the pod is sort of overperforming. So I decided to bump up the re-entry heating to 70% and see if we can do like that. After all, I'm just trying to get them to survive. I don't want the re-entry heating to be like chi levels. So turning it down from 100% to 70% is better. And if we could get something higher, that would be better still. And I, I'm still coming back from the moon trajectory. I just had saved it while it was on its way back. And taking a look at it, well, it's still not using that much of the ablator. So why did Val die during my career mode? Um, uh, well, I mean, we haven't tested it with 100%. Maybe the situ situation is drastically different with 100% and we'll see that in this video. Uh, but anyway, uh, Jeb survived. I had to step away from the computer for just a sec and it happened to be right here. And so Jeb plunged down and I'm including this just as an example of how Kerbal physics is still a little bit iffy sometimes. And yeah, so even though J the pod was plunging at 200 meters per second and because I was away from the computer, I didn't pop the parachute, uh, he survived, uh, much to my own surprise when I got back. So yeah, it's food for thought. Anyway, what about Minmus? I know you're asking. You know, Minmus is further out and it does take more to get back. And so I decided to plop the pod around Minmus using the set object function, orbit function in the Alt F12 cheat menu. And it takes 1,200 to get back from Minmus. Another thing 
that we will have to keep in mind uh, definitely and in fact it takes so much that I had to use infinite propellant that this uh, tank was not suited for it and also we exited Mimis SOI right there so Mimis's SOI is only 170 kilo uh, kilometers up and then the pod flipped around when we exited the SOI and I had to flip it around again and so yeah that is a lot to have figured out about Mimis right there uh, the Velocity data is 8,100, 8,200 meters per second coming in basically. So, and then the surface velocity is 7,000, basically 2,000 meters per second over the low current orbit velocity for this TRAPPIST 1E version. So, probably we're looking at a transfer speed of more than 2,000 meters per second. And here we are coming in. So that's the transfer delta V I was talking about. To Minmus, about 2,000 is my first bet. And from Minmus, it doesn't really take that much extra later either. We use less than half. And so I'm satisfied with that. Um, I go back in time a little bit to the Minmus thing and decide to bump it up to 80% re-entry heating. So still the pod coming back from Minmus. And we are doing 80% re-entry heating and seeing what difference that makes. So here we are coming in. Off that goes. All right. And coming in, the blader is melting away. We've got a little temperature gauge on it. And well, sort of. Sort of doing stuff. It's less than half the blader left. So that's a little bit more. But sort of feeling comfortable about 80% at this point, right? Well, I decided to do the plunge test again and see if Jeb once again survives. Just out of curiosity, right? And yeah, though the parachute didn't. <laughs> the parachute that I did not pop. Okay, well, hmm, interesting. All right, well, what about not 120? What about uh, doing it with Valentina? Maybe Jeb is just lucky, right? <laughs> Maybe Jeb is just lucky. So, uh, not around Mimis. I just want to test Valentina around Kerbin coming back, like like it was in career mode. So 100% around Kerbin, and so retro-burning. Uh, the periapsis doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. It, we really have to get pretty low before we actually slow down. And it takes a long time to slow down. So, but one difference from the career mode uh, situation is that we have full blader here. And we only had half a blader in the career mode situation where Valentina came back from orbit and perished. So, with 100% re-entry heating, we basically lose all the ablator. Well, we do use all the ablator. And now I was wondering what would happen when we did run out of a blader. And not very much. So in the career mode, I'm thinking that it was because it was slightly deviating away from retrograde because SAS, we didn't have the hold retrograde function. Uh, Val was, did not have a star yet. And so is Wobbly. And it was a little bit offset from retrograde, and so the pod was overheating, and I think that's what killed Val. But the whole business about all the ablator going away is obviously bad. Is the heat shield supposed to survive if all the ablator is gone? <laughs> I'm not entirely clear about that situation either, especially since the heating must be a lot higher here than it is around stock urban. So, lots of questions there. I decided to uh, try again, this time with half the ablator, and the reason for that is we'll lose ablator sooner, and if we lose ablator sooner, maybe then the heat shield will blow up, right? Because it's going to be coming, it'll be going faster still when all the ablator's gone. And, well, not so much. Uh, all the ablator does go away, and yet uh, the heat shield still sticks around. So, that's the result. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, one other difference between this and the situation in the career mode is that I had dumped the mob propellant. I'm going to assume that 10 units of mob propellant isn't going to make a difference, but you know, maybe the mob propellant absorbs heat or something. <laughs> but but still, we lost all the ablators, so I don't know. All right, so. 
I decided to try something completely different. I installed the Making History DLC, which I had not installed in the career mode yet. And I decided to go with the one that had the worst uh, mass to surface area ratio, which is the largest one. So it's the heaviest one with the basically the same surface ratio as the other, uh, same surface area as the others. And I did remember to put a reaction wheel on it. And to see, because it doesn't use a separate heat shield, right? It has a built-in 20 units of ablator. What's going to happen if we have 100% re-entry heating with this? And so that's what I wanted to know. So off goes the service module. And here we go. Let's find out with three crew members coming in. And here it goes. Ah, the suspense. So we do see the ablator going away fairly rapidly, considering there's only 20 units of it. And when we get to the thick of it, it hasn't really melted away as much as I thought, but then we have this temperature gauge that's like maxed out and making me think that it's going to blow up at any time. As it turns out, it doesn't blow up at any time. It, uh, it just stays maxed out. Well, it actually diminishes after a little while and goes away. And the ablator also does not run out, which is interesting. This, these things are OP, really. Uh, only 20 units of ablator, that much sur surface area, and coming back from low carbon orbit in the Trappist system and still like that. Well, anyway, I decided to see if 80% was okay from low carbon orbit here. Uh, you might remember we tried 80% coming back from Minmus, not from low carbon orbit before. So I was thinking maybe, well, since all the ablator melts away if we do 100%, maybe we should go 80% and see. And maybe that'd be a good compromise. And here we are coming in with Jeb and the Mark 1 pod and seeing if the ablator will hold. And it sure loses a lot more ablator from low carbon orbit than from Minmus. And again, it's because I, I think I got it wrong earlier. Uh, Minmus is deeper, so it spends less time in the atmosphere. And so there's less time for the ablator to burn off. And I double checked there that the reentering was only at 80% because our ablator was going away pretty fast. But because this is shallower, I think I got mixed up earlier, because this is shallower, it spends more time in the atmosphere ablating, and therefore that's why we lose more ablator like this. But still, it's a big difference, it seems like. It seems like it's a big difference. Um, we nearly lose all the ablator here, whereas from Minmus, we didn't get that close. And this time, Jib dies. Uh, in other words, without the parachute. Again, I was deliberately testing the situation now. Uh, this time, no bouncy and magically surviving Mark 1 pod. So, Ker Kerbal's just sort of random sometimes, is sort of the point there. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it could just be sort of a fluke thing sometimes. But I think, I think I'm going to go with 80% on the re-entry heating for the career mode and see how that works out for us. But... I'm sort of iffy on it because maybe it was just tilting away slightly from retrograde and 80% isn't going to save the thing as long as the Kerbals don't have one star. But I'm not sure. I think then the solution would be to have them level up immediately instead of waiting for them to return to level up. And I think that might work as long as they have the ability to hold retrograde. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. And those were the results of the testing. So there you have it. Tell me what you think. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.